Hello and welcome, Aquarius are here coming to you with a new build video and today we are actually going to be looking at a bruiser heavy armor build. Now for those of you who have been watching my channel or my streams you know that I don't run a lot of bruiser builds or a lot of heavy armor for that fact. I do uh, like to tank in expeditions so I do run heavy armor for that as well as some hammer, sword and shield, various different uh, melee weapons. But today we are going over my PvP, mainly OPR, heavy armor, melee build. Now, again, I don't normally have fun with the more like bruiser heavy armor or even medium or light armor builds. Um, it's just been really difficult for me to find a combination of armor and weapons that really work for me. But I think I finally figured out what I enjoy as a melee player. So over the last few weeks, I've been playing around with different weapon combos. I found that spear and hammer are the combo for me. So with that and heavy armor, I ended up coming up with this build that I'm quite happy with. It's been very, very fun to use. Um, I know there might be better combos for different situations, but this is what I've been having the most fun with as a bruiser. Any of the other combos that I've tried have not been as much fun as this for me. So let's get into the build and take a look at what I got going. Before we start taking a look at the gear here, I do just want to say if this video does help you out or if you just enjoyed the content, please drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. It really does help out the channel a lot, so I do appreciate it. But let's get into the armor of what I have going on. Now, some of these pieces I did have, I did move some stuff around and then others I did end up purchasing. Um, but I went the same route or very similar route that I do with my medium armor mage build. Um, so I will link that as well, just in case you do want to take a look at that. I'll throw that in the description below. But taking a look at the armor of what we have. Um, what you're going to notice is I have five stacks of freedom. Now, five stacks of freedom as a bruiser is very, very nice, especially in the heavy armor. It allows me to get away a little bit quicker uh, if I do get stunned, slowed, anything like that. So I do really, really like the five stacks of freedom, which this is the first time I've ran the full five stacks with a heavy armor, and it is really, really nice. So what I have is my helmet here. We've got, obviously, freedom, resilient on all five pieces. So we'll just go over the third perk of what I have on each piece. So this one, obviously, you can see it's a rusher plate helmet. So I did get it from OPR, and it had the physical version. With all the bows that are in OPR nowadays, the physical version has been kind of nice to have. Um, I only have one stack of it, so is it doing a whole lot? Maybe not, but it does help a bit. And it was free, <laughs> so that definitely helps. Uh, for the chest piece, I actually removed this chest piece from my medium armor mage build because I had a replacement that had the same perks, but it had int on it instead of just full con. Um, so I just flip flop those around. And then as you can see, I'm actually running a refreshing evasion. Now, I really like refreshing evasion with both my mage and my healer builds. Um, now, I know some people don't necessarily always like refreshing evasion with healer builds, and they might not even like it with bruiser builds. Um, I'm not a main bruiser, but it's really been nice for me. I like Refreshing Evasion a lot. It's been working really, really well for me. Um, so I just kind of have been going with it. Plus, I had some armor already set up with it. Um, so it was a little bit easier for me to get that build going. So we just kind of rolled with it. Um, on the gloves, this is another one that I did get for free. Um, but we have the Refreshing on it, which Refreshing is always going to be a good perk. Uh, cooldown reduction, never a bad thing to have. Uh, I would prefer it to be Refreshing Evasion to allow me to get a little bit more cooldown uh, on command, but for now that will work just fine. Um, these pants, again, Refreshing Evasion on these, uh, as well as my boots. So I have all this Refreshing Evasion, We've got three stacks on our armor, one stack of Refreshing, one stack of Physical Aversion. Um, now you do have the option if you don't want to go with your Refreshing Evasion route, you could always go with Refreshing, you could go with more Aversions, whether it's Elemental or Physical. Um, I just really like having control over my cooldown reduction, so that's why I go with uh, the Refreshing Evasion. And then as you can see for my Rune Glass, I'm running the Onyx, so we're running full Onyx in all of our armor, and then I'm running, running the Nature. So all of my Nature attacks do plus 2% damage per armor piece, so that's a 10% buff to my Nature damage. And for that reason... We are running my healer hammer. So this is the same hammer that I run when I heal. Um, so we have the Arboreal Attunement, Sundering Shockwave, Trenchant Crits, um, and the heavy attacks really do land for a lot. So with the augmented Arboreal Rune Glass in there, it's converting 40% of our damage dealt um, just from all of our attacks with the Warhammer. 
converting it into nature damage, which is really nice because then we get that 10% buff on top of it. Um, plus, we also inflict the poison, which the poison will add towards, obviously, damage output, but also it will get us more heart rune charge. With my spear, I'm running a Sundering Javelin Vicious Plague Crit Spear. Um, I do have another one that has Bleeding Sweep with Keenly Empowered instead of Plague Crits, and then also Vicious that I can interchange if I need to, but this is what I've been running and been really enjoying. Um, now, I don't run the amber gem in this what i do run though is the emerald with the arboreal on top of it so we still get the poison ticks um, but the reason why i am running the emerald is because we do the extra damage on a an enemy that's below 30 percent health and the cool thing with the emerald is when you rune glass an emerald it does not nerf the stats of that particular gem so if you look at the arboreal augmented or augmented arboreal gem it actually converts to 40% instead of 50%. A normal pristine amber would be 50%, but it does cut it down. With the spear, though, um, we get that 20% buff on top, you know, as long as they're under 30% health, and then we also drop the poison on top. So I've really been liking the emerald um, with the sweep and the sweep coup de gras. You actually can finish people off uh, pretty nicely with this because you get that extra buff on top. Um, so that's what we're running for our weapons. So we do get that extra bonus in the nature damage. And again, our hammer is our main, like big damage dealer. Our heavy attacks can land for quite a bit. Um, if we hit the right target, uh, for heart rune, we are still running the detonate. Um, I still see most bruisers running detonate. You could also run vines if you wanted. Detonate has been working great. Um, I'm always a fan of Cannon Blast too, so if you ever just want to have some fun shooting some people with your Bruiser build, you can always run Cannon. Um, but Detonate is kind of a nice go-to. You can get a big stun off with the hammer into the Detonate, um, do a whole bunch of damage. For jewelry, now I'm actually wearing three named pieces of jewelry. So my amulet is the Scorpion Stone. Um, I really like it. We get the extra empowered health and then flame protection on top with how many fire staffs are in OPR nowadays. Uh, having that flame protection is really nice. Plus we slot the ruby in so we do get even more fire resistance on top. For our ring, we're wearing champion's rings. We have the invigorated punishment, hardy, keen awareness, three very, very solid perks. There's not really much I would change about my ring. Um, I I really like Champion's Ring a lot for this build. So I'm just leaving that. The Invigorate Punishment is very, very nice to have. Um, it does help with like the Sweep Coup de Gras, all that stuff. And then for our Earring, this is the Priestess Charm. Um, and this has the Refreshing Evasion, Refreshing Toast, and Nimble, which the Nimble is very important for this build and Refreshing Toast I'm always going to have. The fact that it had Refreshing Evasion on top was an extra bonus. Um, and then for these named items, because I know all three of these are named, uh, I'll put in the description below where to get each one. Um, so then you too can look for those items if you need to. So that's what I got going on for my gear. Um, pretty straightforward as far as the perks I'm going with. And then obviously the perks that you're going to run for your weapons, if you end up following this build might vary a bit, kind of see what works best for you. Um, but this is what's been really working for me and really, really fun. But next, let's take a look at the attributes and the mastery of the weapons. Taking a look at the attributes here, this is a pretty standard layout for how I've been running it. Um, 160 con, so then we can get the 40 con food up to the 200, then we get the plus 10% increase to physical and elemental armor. And then for strength, we hit 300, so our base damage to heavy attacks is increased by 10%. So our heavy attacks with our hammer really do hit pretty hard because of that. But that's what I run for the attributes. For the weapon mastery, we'll start with spear. Uh, now with spear, it's a little bit different of a build, and we'll kind of go over some of the perks. But as you can see, I'm running vault kick, sweep, and then the javelin. And javelin, I actually have not been leveling up all the way. Um, in order to be able to get these two other perks. So what I'm doing is invigorating crits. So restore 20 stam on critical hits. It's very, very nice um, when you're trying to dodge around and you can hit one light attack, get a crit, and all of a sudden get 20 stam back instantly. So it's very, very nice to have that. 
And then the other one is the strong conditioning. And with this, as long as we're below 50% stam, our stam regen rate is increased by 30%. So if we're exhausted, anything like that, this ends up combating that exhaustion pretty good on top of having the nimble with that. Um, and if you're in a sacred ground, you get a 25% increase to stam regen as well. I don't know for sure what the cap is on stam regeneration. Um, so if you do know, let me know in the comments what that cap is. But if you stack all that on top, the exhaust doesn't seem to do as much since it's kind of combated by uh, all this extra stam regen. We do run the Merciless Strength. So then when we get the Sweep Coup de Gras, we can actually uh, do a little bit more damage on top of that if they're docked down. Um, on the Impaler side, I did want to go for the Exploited Weakness because we do get the 10% max or bonus damage for each debuff on target. The max is 30%, so that's a pretty big buff, especially if you stack that uh, with the Merciless Strength. So you're doing a lot of damage in a Sweep Coup de Gras um, if you have all that stacked correctly. And then as far as the uh, side perks on here, or the passive perks, um, really the only two that we were kind of stuck between is the Exacerbating crits um, which extends the duration of your spear de debuffs by 20 percent but we're not running any bleeds or we don't have a ton of rends and all that uh, with this build so i figured going with exposed wounds there's a lot of people running keenly jagged or running great sword with heavy attacks that'll cause the bleed so the idea is that if we're fighting those people which a lot of times in a clump fight there's going to be bleeds happening and we get that extra crit chance so i did want to run that um, instead of going with the extension of the debuffs um, and it's working really good for me so this is the spear build you can definitely check that out next is the warhammer build um, this hammer build i've ran for a while i really like it uh, i don't really change too much on it just because it's worked well for me um, but if you do find that there's certain passives or certain perks that just work better for you definitely change it up see what works best um, but the three abilities we're running are the Wrecking Ball, Shockwave, and Path of Destiny. We do have the cooldown reduction on our light attacks using Acceleration. Um, and then we just do a lot of the damage stacking with a little bit of Fortify um, mixed in on some of these. And then as much Exhaust, Slow, anything like that that we can get, we are trying to slow down the enemy um, and just really allow the team to collapse on them. This build is designed to be just a CC machine. You will go crazy with the CC. Um, you might not have the highest damage output out there, but you will be able to CC people and either keep them CC'd until you kind of plug away at them, or your team will have enough time to catch up and kind of collapse on those plays that you're making. So that is what we got for our spear and hammer build. Next, let's just do kind of a little overview just to take a look at the build and see uh, the various kind of combos and, and what it can do. All right, so what we're watching here is actually a duel. Kent luckily helped me out with it. Um, and what I'm showing you is more so the way that the stam regen works. So I just kind of had her sit there with her healer fit so she could keep alive and we could test this. And I want you to pay close attention to the stam bar. So as you can see, when I'm below 50, I get a pretty good regen. And then when I land those crits, you can see my stam just jump up. So I'm getting those bursts of 20 stam. There's no cooldown to that. So I'm really just sitting there trying to get as much stam and I can just keep dodging. So you can imagine if you're in a group of enemies and you do like a double dodge and then you get a bunch of crits with a sweep or a vault kick and you're going to get a bunch of that stam back. Um, or even just some lights and heavies, you'll get a whole bunch back. But the stam regen is really what I wanted to show uh, in this duel here. And then next, let's take a look at the next duel, and I'll just show you the combo. It does not work the best on healers, but just so you can kind of see some of the various combos you can throw out. Um, and I hope that you can kind of come up with some more, too, if you do end up using this build. But let's take a look at that next duel. Okay, taking a look here, again, this build is not designed to take out healers when they're just sitting there healing themselves, but you can kind of see some of the combo of what I'm looking at. So obviously we do have the Javelin, Vault Kick into the shockwave and a sweep so by the time we get the sweep off we end up getting our cooldowns back and then it allows us to keep those cc's going now a lot of people are going to be able to dodge out of that and that is understandable being that um you know there is that delay in between but as you can see if you can get the combos down depending on how much freedom they have you will be able to kind of keep them on the ground keep them going 
Um, but again, this build is designed to just be kind of a CC machine to keep people just CC'd and then uh, the team can follow up. Or if they're a squishy enough player, you'll be able to kind of plug away at them and take them out on your own as long as they don't have a pocket healer with them. But I've really been enjoying this build. You can see it is not great on these uh, healers, but it is a very, very fun build with a lot of CC potential. Now that we have a pretty good idea of how the build works for me and why I like certain perks and certain combos, let's take a look at some gameplay footage. I have a few clips that I took over the past few days, so let's see what it looks like in action. That is going to do it for this video. So thank you to everyone who is watching today. I really do appreciate it. Um, this build, again, it's been very, very fun for me to play Bruiser with this particular build. And that's coming from someone who typically would not like a Bruiser build or any heavy armor build in PvP for that matter. So I really hope that this build is fun for you. If you do like it, uh, please, you know, let me know in the comments if it worked out for you and what changes you might have made to make it work better for you. But again, this is what's been fun for me, so I really hope it does help you out. Um, if you do want to stop by a stream sometime, I do stream on Twitch throughout the week. Uh, I try to stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, so feel free to stop on by, ask any questions, or just hang out. But that is going to do it for me for this one, so until next time, I'll see you guys later.